And what's up guys? This is my camera comparison test of the new Insta360 X4 versus the X3 versus the GoPro 12 versus the GoPro Max. Which, Which one, one is, is the best action camera out right, right now? now? In this video, let's find out. This new X4 action cam from Insta360 is just straight up awesome, but is it worth the upgrade or could you save some money and maybe go with a standard cheap GoPro? I use action cameras all the time for my videos and the X3 is one of my favorites to use. So in this video, I'm excited to show you all of my personal new favorite features on the X4 and then we're also gonna inspect some side-by-side -side comparisons of the X4 versus the 3 versus the GoPro 12 and for funsies, the old GoPro Max. And this video is not sponsored by anyone. Huge thanks to Insta for sending me the early sample unit to test out, but this is my authentic review. And here's the current pricing for all of these, which I always find helpful for adding context to the value and determining your ROI. Now, first off, the headlining feature. The X4 can finally shoot up to 8K 360 video. Now, I was pretty hesitant at first, thinking, well, am I really gonna be able to tell the difference in 8K? And it wasn't until I viewed the footage of the X4 versus the X3 that I can say, wow, it is a massive step up in image quality. I'm super impressed and happy to see it. In these side-by-sides, a couple things that I'm noticing. Not only is that X4 footage looking really sharp, but its dynamic range is super impressive. Its colors and contrast, they look really pleasing in my opinion, way, way better than the X3 and the GoPro Max. I'd almost vote that the X4 colors remind me of like a mixture of the GoPro and iPhone HDR video. I'm really digging it. I personally don't have time for color grading my shots. So whatever looks best straight out of camera, that's what I usually prefer. So yeah, well done to Insta360 for that 8K spherical video. We still export those files in 4K, but man, they look really sharp and super comparable to the GoPro. Now before a few of you trolls start going off in the comments down below and talking about how this is apples to oranges and 360 versus flat action cameras unfair. Well, it is, but it isn't because I, along with a million other people, don't want to carry around two action cameras in my pocket. So I just want to choose one, the X4 versus GoPro, let's say, which one is better? And yes, of course they have different use cases, but for a majority of people, they're not going to be buying both. If you just had to choose one, which one has the most bang for the buck? Now here's some stabilization tests, and honestly, even though the GoPro is still really good, I just don't think you can ever compete against that 360 footage stabilization. The Insta360 is just next level. And of course, don't forget, with these side-by-side -side shots, you'll see the mounting rail that I use. I just needed something to align all the lenses and cameras. You gotta ignore that stitching on the 360 cameras. Normally, when you mount, let's say, the X4 on an invisible selfie stick, it looks like it's just floating there. You can't see the stick or anything thing around it and it adds to that magical fun. You can swing the camera in any direction, point it at any angle, and it just doesn't matter. The 360 captures everything and then you reframe later. And for funsies, I threw that old GoPro Max in there just to see how the old dog has aged over the years. And as a reminder, it's been almost half a decade when this sucker came out, October 2019. Rumors of this new GoPro Max 2 is coming out this year, so definitely consider hitting that subscribe button so you can see that comparison when it comes out. And as another side note, the GoPro Max reframing app is just painful and embarrassing to use compared to the Insta360 Studio app. That's a whole nother video in itself. Now for a quick microphone comparison, it's super windy down here at the lake. And notoriously, the Insta360 cameras have been, uh, I'll just say a bit lackluster in the microphone recording onboard area. So I'm intrigued. How does the X4 sound compared to the X3 versus the GoPro Hero 12? versus the GoPro Max. Action cameras are often used to shoot slow motion video and I'm super excited to see that we can do 4K 100 FPS slow-mo on the new X4. I love a good slow motion shot and I'm happy to see that improvement. Now with specs on paper, GoPro 12 is gonna win. The 4K 120 looks sharp, plus it can even do 240 FPS at 2.7K. However, I'd vote a very close second place goes to the X4. Just look at how much sharper and better quality video it looks over the other two. I wish it did 4K 120 because that 4K 100 on a 30p timeline, it just doesn't work super well, but oh well, I guess. I love the ability to reframe my slow motion shots and follow the action, like in these examples. 
following the rock through the air or following my massive jump on this X quad. Hey, I was trying to take it easy, no helmet, and I didn't want to show off to you guys. This is a perfect demonstration to show the pros and cons of each platform. With the X4, I can reframe the angle and follow that action, but that's gonna take time to reframe, then you can do that from your phone or computer and both are straightforward and easy, but with the GoPro footage, it just takes no time to reframe. The footage is locked in, there's no reframing. So we sort of miss some of the action, but the image quality is still top notch for an action camera. Now, that's a perfect segue, Ben, into this next mode. Insta360 calls it single lens mode, and I can sort of use the X4 like a standard GoPro. Now, it doesn't have as many resolution and frame rate options, but at least it goes up to 4K 60, and I can choose the forward or rear facing lens, hit record, and those files are saved to the SD card as standard MP4 videos. They're not 360, so zero processing needed. One wishlist item here, I find it super cool if I could switch the lenses mid recording. So maybe I could do a selfie shot and then flip the camera around to the other side to show the action without having to stop and start the recording. This would allow the screen to always be pointing back at me so I could kind of preview and frame up my shots. Another big feature on the X4 is 11K time lapse, and those look really nice and super sharp and crispy. It's really fun being able to zoom way in on smaller objects or subjects, and the resolution still holds up pretty good. And then we can zoom way out for context or scenery. There's just a lot of fun versatility. Another new feature I'm grateful for are these new lens guards. It's a massive request from all of us users, and it gives us a lot more confidence to use this thing as a rugged action camera. These two lenses are just super exposed, easy to scratch up, and now it's just a simple twist on and off of these lens guards. The old way, if we got a scratch, well, you had to send in the whole unit to replace it, or have insurance, or cost a lot of money. I'm just super happy and grateful to see these easy twist on and off lens guards. I'm super intrigued with these lens guards. If we put them on, are we gonna notice a loss in clarity? Well, let's do a quick comparison. Now, this is with the standard lens guard on, and on the premium guards. Well, I ran a little test, and not gonna lie, it sort of failed. I couldn't tell a difference at all with that tiny text. Instead, when I just analyzed the tree details behind me, they all looked sort of the same to me. Now, I'm sure that in certain scenarios, you will see a difference, but in this sample, I did not. Now, in this one shot, I did notice this ring in the footage. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I think it'll be super critical that whichever lens guards you use, it'll need to be cleaned very thoroughly inside and out to maintain that optimal image quality and nothing will ever beat the straight raw lens in itself. And a quick test number two on those premium lens guards. I cleaned them up. We're inside here 5.7k on the X4. I wanted to see are we still getting that halo ring effect or is it gone and looking better? Now there's a ton more to this camera that I didn't even get to show you guys or test or compare. There's a ton of fun accessories and wireless mic. There's a lot of stuff but I literally have a baby coming in less than 48 hours so I gotta run pack some bags. I'll try to post more videos soon, so make sure you're subscribed to miss that uh, X4 coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.